All right. Well, welcome everybody to Antelope Island State Park's Dark Sky Week. Um, we are doing a um, Stellarium presentation. Um, well, so so the the goal for tonight. Um, first of all, I want to welcome you. Um, glad you're here. Um, it's a beautiful night. It was really rainy this morning, but now it's beautiful. So. Um, tonight um as we get before we get going i do want to thank in the background we've got a couple of people helping us out um, on some technical sides so ryan andresen from night sky science is the technical uh, guru um, making it all happen and then trish ackley the park naturalist um, will be answering your questions if you type them in on the chat on facebook we are recording this um so um you know, if you get cut off or can't sit and wait the whole time, you always come back and watch it again. <clears throat> um, all right, so we'll just get started. My name is Wendy and I am the assistant park manager at Antelope Island State Park. I've been here for about 11 years and um, really um, Antelope Island is a great, it's a great park and we are a, an international dark sky park. We were designated in 2017. We're not the darkest, park um, in the world or in Utah, uh, but we are the, the closest international dark sky park to the majority of the Wasatch Front. There is one other um, in Ogden um, that is a dark sky park, um, um, but we're, we're closer pretty much you know, to, to the entire range. So it's a great place to come out and enjoy the night sky. So this is kind of a precursor to next Saturday. We will be doing an in-person um, dark sky astronomy program. This is will be held at the visitor center. I know it was the name of it was called Hot Tub Astronomy, and then there was some disclaimer within that that it will not have any hot tubs nor um, and clothes are required. So, uh, but the idea is that um, it's. It's astronomy for, you, you know, you don't have any equipment. You're just out looking at the night sky. So we will be doing that next Saturday. So this is kind of a precursor to that, to get us thinking about what's up in the sky tonight and try to find those things. So we'll be using a program called Stellarium. So we'll be doing basically two different things in this presentation. I'll, I'll talk to you about the program Stellarium and um, how you can get it and, and what some of the basics of what it can do. And then we'll dive into what you can see in the sky tonight, what you can see in the sky next week as well. So with that, I am going to share my screen of Stellarium. All right. Okay. Um, all right, so there you can see, um, you, can you see my cursor? You can, okay, great, you can see that. All right, so what I am going to show, so this is Stellarium, this is, um, it's, a, it's a program that you can get. There's a, there's a small fee if you get it on your cell phone. I only use it on the desktop. Um, when I'm outside looking at the night sky, if I need a reference to what's up there, I have other apps to do. Solarium, um, you can find that and download it onto your computer. This is, it's a, it's a more powerful tool than I use it for. So there's more features to this program than um, than I, than I use. I really just use it to, to see what's in the sky tonight or next week if I'm planning a presentation or if I'm going maybe to Goblin Valley in a month and I wanna know what the sky is gonna be like, what planets are gonna be out. I will pull up Stellarium and just do a little research because it's a lot of fun just to play with. So I'm gonna just show you a few of the tools that the, the program has. Um, right now, this is, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it because it is pretty small on the screen, but the bottom bar down here has a lot of different options of things you can choose. So um, it shows that it, it is showing the sky, looking south 
today, April 23rd, at 6.05 p.m. Um, so this is this is the sky and you can grab with your mouse if you just right or left uh, left click you can just grab and move the sky around so now we're looking to the west as the sun is getting low in the sky we can keep moving around until we're looking into the north and then just so you can just look throughout the whole night sky so i'm going to go go back to looking north and you can also kind of zoom out more so you see more of the sky. It does get this really awesome fisheye look to it. Or you can zoom way in. Like if I want to be like, where's the sun? I can zoom in on the sun, which is pretty awesome. That is the sun right now. So that's um you can kind of see it as it's kind of moving because it's it's moving we've got some kind of some solar flares and some hot spots or cold spots or whatever um and we'll zoom back out great way to look at the sun without uh, blinding yourself we're going to go back to the north so there's a few other tools that are listed that are down here on the bottom um we've got we can fast forward in the day, we can pause our, the time. So we can fast forward and get things to speed up with the sun setting over here in the west. There it goes, we'll go ahead and pause it. Or we can go backwards as well. I want to go over to this, this left-hand side where you've got some other tools. Um, you can choose the diff a location right now it is set for Cedar City. No, yep, yeah, it is set for Cedar City. So this is kind of the, the time and the and the place for, you know, the kind of the sky in Cedar City, Utah. So it's not exactly Syracuse. I can search for Syracuse, Utah. Click in there and then uh, apply that. Let's see, I think we're there down here. Yep. So Syracuse, Utah. So we're back side of that. So now it's kind of the sky from Syracuse, Utah. We can also set the time and day. So right now we're on April 23rd. We can jump up to tomorrow. We can jump back to yesterday. We're going to keep it on the 23rd, but I do want to fast forward it to, let's see, that's eight o'clock. I want to jump up to, yeah, maybe eight o'clock. No, we want to jump up to nine o'clock. I'm going to jump up to nine o'clock tonight so we can see what the sky looks like tonight. There's several other tools in here. We can do options. Um, we can control the brightness kind of, of, of different things. We can control light pollution. I do want to talk about that for just a second because if you're viewing this presentation from any major city, if you go out tonight and look up at the night sky you're not the sky is not going to look like it does for us out here because of light pollution the excessive or inappropriate unnecessary use of artificial light at night so that is basically um lights that are not needed and not wanted or they're they're on at inappropriate times or times where it's where you don't really need a light they're too bright they're not shielded. So that, that creates quite a lot of light pollution. I can actually bump this up. And as I do, watch the background and you'll notice that it gets dimmer. The stars get harder and harder and harder to see as I increase the amount of light pollution in the sky. So now all of a sudden, if we're at a light pollution nine, which is what a lot of cities are, a lot of major cities, you look up at the sky and there's not a lot that you can see. It's very minimal on the, on the number of stars you can see. So out here at Antelope Island, we are probably at about, according to this, this program, about a three or a four. We're gonna, we're gonna hang on, we're gonna go to three and we're gonna use that as our light pollution. So we do have some light pollution. We have, there's a lot of light coming from the Wasatch Front. So we do, we do get light pollution from that. But for the most part, especially looking west when you're out here at the island, there's a it's a really dark sky. 
Um, so just really quickly on light pollution, um, it's one of the easiest forms of um, pollution to, to mitigate. Just, hey, wait, look, what's this? You see this moving across the sky right here? I'll come back to light pollution in a minute, but if you follow my cursor, there's this bright thing moving right there, some satellite. If you click on it, it tells you what it is. It's a USA satellite number 186. There you go. Now we know. Now I got to click somewhere where there's nothing, so that goes away. Um, anyway, so back to light pollution. All you, really, all you need to do is think about the lights you have in your yard, in, in your property. Is it something that you really feel like you need? And if it is, great. Can you shield that light so that the light is only facing, shining down? right underneath it or onto the property where you need it and not spilling into your neighbor's property, not spilling out onto the sidewalk, not spilling out into the road. Can you change the color of that light? So is it is it really white, bright white? Can you change it so that it's more of an amber color? Um, the amber color is less harmful um, to nocturnal wildlife and to our own health. So those two things, can you shield it? And can you can you reduce the color temperature? Do you, will do wonders in protecting our night sky. Um, all right, so that's all I'm going to talk about for that. If you want more information on that, there is quite a bit of information on that on the International Dark Sky Association webpage. That's you can go ahead and you can just Google that, search for that. It's the International Dark Sky Association. You can learn a lot about light pollution and how to mitigate that and how to fix that. All right. Um, some other tools that you have on the side that are in this um, sky and viewing option. So we can adjust our light pollution. We Another thing I like to look at is star lore. So what, what we are all familiar with, with the constellations, um, is from, um, it, it's basically has the roots in, in ancient Greek astronomy. But if you look over here on the side, there are all of these different cultures. They all have their own sky lore. So if you wanted to look, learn about, say, uh, I like, I always like to go to Navajo um, sky lore. Um, what you can learn about and what the, the program will show you is the way that the Navajo people, some of the stories and the, the constellations and the way they see the night sky. Um, and I'll kind of show you how that works in a little bit. Um, but you can you can really explore other cultures and the way they see the night sky through this sky lore or star lore. All right. So oh, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to turn off the I want to make it less. There we go. I want this the names of the stars to disappear. Um, cause you don't see those when you look up at the sky. This is what you see when you look up at the sky. So this is really, it's still a really a fisheye view. So what we're doing is we're looking North, but we've got a really good view of the Northwest as well as the Northeast. When you're outside at night and you're looking North, you kind of have to turn your head to the West to see it or turn your head to the East to see it. This is showing us a much bigger field of view of the night sky than, you know, than just looking straight North. Um, if we were outside. This is also much smaller than the night sky. So there's there's uh, obviously, right? But um, if things look really close together, but when you get outside and you look at the big, beautiful sky, things are a lot farther apart. So it sometimes makes it a little bit tricky to, to find things again in the night sky. But what I wanna do is just focus on a small part of the sky that is the same generally any time of the year. So the stars, just like the moon, just like the sun, and just like planets, rotate or appear to rotate from our vantage point, from east to west. They rise in the east and they set in the west. And as we move through the seasons, as the earth orbits the sun, what we see out in the night sky changes because we're we're at a different point in our orbit and when night falls and we're looking out into the night sky we're looking at a different part of 
this is the night sky. We're looking at a, a different area of the universe. So something that you might be familiar with seeing in the summer and then you go out in the winter to try to find it won't be there and you'll be very confused. For example, Orion is a very popular constellation through the winter. People who know Orion love Orion. And then um, if you're not really you know, thinking about the way that the Earth kind of moves in its orbit and realizing that the vantage point changes, you might go out in the summer to try to find Orion and you won't find him because he is a winter constellation, because things rotate um, and we move in our orbit. However, there is um, one exception, and that is the northern sky. So things that when you're looking north, um, for us, we're, we are looking at about, um, so let me turn on, if we, were, we were, if we were at the North Pole, sorry, not that one, if we were at the North Pole, this right here, this area would be directly above our heads. Um, um trying to visualize so as the earth rotates um it's it's you know moving kind of in a circle right a little bit except at the north pole you're not really moving anywhere you're just kind of there it's like if you had an umbrella and kind of put it on the ground open it up and spun it everything on the outside of the umbrella moves really far but the that center point pretty much stays right there that's kind of what happens if you're at the north pole on the earth right so looking straight ahead what you're seeing pretty much is there the whole time. And that probably doesn't make too much sense, and, and I get that, but we'll kind of talk through that. So just, just know, just trust me, that when, you, when you're looking north, what you see in the north is, is going to always be there. Whether it's winter, some spring, fall, spring, fall, whatever, whenever it is, um, middle of the night, early in the morning, as long as you can see the stars and look north, you'll see these basic constellations. Now, they may be in different locations, in different positions, but these are the constellations you'll see. These are called circumpolar constellations because they circum or cir circumnavigate, cir they circle the pole star, which is the North Star. Um, now I know, so if you're, if you're in comments, uh, if you can just kind of look at this screen here, I'm gonna zoom in just a little so that it's maybe a little bit more obvious on your screens. Is there anything that you can see in there that is familiar to you? Like, do you see any patterns of stars that you're like, oh, I think that looks like X, Y, Z. Um, if, you, if you do, Trish will read those out so that we can kind of get a little idea of that. Um, if there's only three of you watching, then you really need to participate. Um, but is there anything that's that you can see that's familiar? There are definitely more than three, Wendy. I don't <laughs> I don't have any answers yet, but I'm gonna let those trickle in and um, just give some shout outs. Um, thanks very much to Mike for um, sharing this and tagging some of his friends. Mike is part of the uh, new moon crew that comes out and shoots from Buffalo Point every month um, around the the new moon. So, Thanks, Mike, for uh, inviting your friends to watch this. Quincy is from uh, Port Charlotte, uh, Florida, showing us some love. Uh, and also, uh, Mike mentioned again that the Stellarium is available as a, an app on Apple products and uh, Android phones. So that's uh, a favorite for, for him as well when he's out here shooting with the new moon crew. And Fiona chimed in. She sees uh, the Big Dipper or maybe the Little Dipper, not sure. Great. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate it. And and in Florida, um, the, the North Star and this kind of area of the sky will still be visible to you. Um, but because you're further south, it is going to be a little bit different view. And that's the beauty of being able to choose your location on Stellarium is that you'll get the night sky basically from where you're at. Um, okay, so yes, that you see, you do see a dipper. You might see the little dipper, but I bet what you're looking at is the big dipper because the little dipper is is pretty hard to see. So I will kind of circle that. So you've got this area of the sky right there is the big dipper. 
it's upside down right now. It's spilling all of its contents onto the earth. Thank you. We need the rain. Um, so the, the handle is these three stars in a row right here. So these three pretty bright stars kind of making an arc. They blend right into the cup, which are these four stars right here. And then so this is the bottom of the dipper. This is the top where everything is draining out um, onto the earth, which is awesome. Send us your rain. So yeah, so this is the Big Dipper. It's also um, known as maybe the plow. Um, the Big Dipper is a, it's not, not really a constellation. It's that it's called it's what's called an asterism. So it's a grouping of stars that that is not an official constellation, but um, is something that kind of forms a pattern. It is the constellation that this is a part of is Ursa Major, which is the Great Bear. And um, we pull that down a little bit. The Great Bear is basically right. Here, this whole like all of these little kind of double double stars there. Um, these extra little stars out here and around are all part of the Big Bear. Now, if you're looking at it and you're going, yep, this is why I cannot do constellations because that looks nothing like a bear. I can't see it. I don't know how to even look at it. And you know what? That's okay. Um, there's, a, there's something that somebody once told me that it's super basic. And of course, it's absolutely logical. But it, it helped me to be able to just look at an area of the sky and see it for the constellation that it is rather than trying to find a picture in it sometimes. But um, what, what she said was um, to remember that constellations aren't real. <laughs> so there's not really, right? There's not really a bear in the sky. There's not really um, a man in the sky or whatever it is, a, a fox or a leopard or a, a lynx, right? Those things aren't really there. And, so, so constellations are areas of the sky that help us and help astronomers um, be able to kind of break the sky up um, into, at least in uh, for the for the Western kind of culture, in, into eighty-eight groupings, into eighty-eight constellations, eighty-eight areas of the sky, and that, and so you can look, you can say, you know, look in Orion or look in Ursa Major. And then you know that you're looking within that area of the sky for a certain thing. So, it, and it's a way for, anyway, those of us who are um, amateur astronomers to look up and, and find different things in the sky, find different stars. So a really fun tool that I'm gonna show you now down here. You can actually turn on the lines of the constellations. So now we can kind of see and start to maybe visualize how those stars go together. So let's just focus on the Big Dipper here. I'm gonna actually zoom in a little bit more. Sorry, I made it weird. We've got, again, the handle and the cup. But then here's the rest of it, right? Here's the rest of, of Ursa Major. So maybe if you're just like, okay, so maybe there's his nose, Maybe there's his body. It's a bear with a tail. He's laying on his back. Here's um, a leg. Here's another leg. Front leg. And then his head laying on his back. And if you're like, nope, still don't see it. That's just ridiculous. You're right. It still is. But they've all still there. And this helped us even more. Here's um, uh, an idea of Ursa Major. But then look look right next door. This is a lynx, right? You can tell by his cute little body. But look at the constellation. It's just like a connection of, of dots, right? What, 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 huh? So yeah, you'll look at that, at that and you'll, you'll never see it again. Because, <laughs> because it just, if I take the things off, yeah, what? It, huh? And anyway, right here, this great big, space in between Ursa Major and whatever was over here. Okay, but I've turned off the dots and I've moved the screen. Can you still see the Big Dipper? And there's the handle and the cup. Great. Okay, so I'm going to pull back again so you can see more of the sky. 
All right, so we're going to use the Big Dipper as basically our guide for this area of the sky. Because most people can find the Big Dipper eventually. Um, and if you can find the Big Dipper, you can find several other constellations. So you don't just have to be like, I have no idea what's up there. I can only find the Big Dipper. Now you'll be able to find more. And here's how. So we know that the Big Dipper points to the North Star. Um, and I want to show you how you find that if you don't know. So I want you to find the Big Dipper again up here in the top of the screen. You've got the handle. You've got the cup. Now these two stars at the end of the cup form what are known as the pointer stars. And the pointer stars will point to the Big Dipper as long as you go from the bottom of the cup to the top. So remember, this is the bottom. This is the top. We're upside down. Um, you draw a line between those two and, and then extend that out about five times that distance. So one, two, three, four, five. And we get to this star right there. That is the North Star or Polaris. Now, it's not the brightest star in the sky. It's, um, you know, obviously there's a brighter one over here. There's a brighter one clear over here in the corner. Um, so it, it's not the brightest star in the sky, but it is the brightest star, a, a bright-ish star in its area of the sky. Um, so that's that's Polaris, that's the North Star. And what's great, another great thing about that, not only do all of the other stars rotate around Polaris, um, it's also part of the Little Dipper. So if you're not sure where the Little Dipper is, find Polaris, and you've, you've, you've got a hint of where the Little Dipper is. To help find that one, because it is dimmer, I'm going to turn on the lines again. And there it comes out nice and clear. So the so Polaris, the North Star, is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. And then there's some really dim stars in between for the rest of the handle and for part of the cup. The two ends of the cup over here are fairly bright. So keep an eye on that area. I'm going to shut the lines off. And see if you can still see those stars. You should at least be able to see Polaris and the two ends of the Little Dipper's cup. Now, this is one of the constellations that if you're in a even a somewhat kind of light polluted area, it's going to be really hard to see. Um, and if, then if you're in a really dark area, it's going to be really hard to see because in dark areas, there is so many other stars in the night sky. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see. There we go. Um, let me just give you an example of what happens when we, um, if I can grab that, doesn't always want to be grabbed. Oh, well, let's see. We're just going to do it without grabbing it. If I maybe watch over here and up here, as I turn the light pollution down, you can see a lot more stars pop out. And when I do that, uh, did you, can you still find, I need to move the screen. Can you still find Polaris? Can you find the Big Dipper still? Do you see where it's at? And can you find the Little Dipper? There's a lot more stars to try to like muddle through. But again, here's the handle of the Big Dipper. Pointer stars pointing to Polaris, the handle and the cup of the Little Dipper. and it's pouring into the Big Dipper. Let me turn the lines back on. It is pouring into the Big Dipper. All right, let's go back to our level of light pollution. Back to a three is what we're doing. Okay. All right, now what we can do, if we continue on, if we go through Polaris and continue on, now you can't really go in a straight line because remember the sky is kind of curvy. When you're out in the night sky, when you're out at night, this works a little bit better. But if you just continue on through, you'll come to this lovely little creature down here. Right now it looks like um, an E or a three, I guess. No, it would be a backwards three, but um, like an E, kind of a long or a lightning bolt where it's kind of zigzag there, right? Does anyone know what that constellation is? You don't have to even spell it right in the chat. I bet Trish will figure it out. 
you know what that constellation is? No, nobody, nothing. No right. guesses so far, Wendy. Guesses. We yes. bored them to tears. This is, here's another cool little function of Stellarium. Oh, we our friend it. Ryan just piped up Cassiopeia. Oh, yeah, and just as I put it in there. Yes. So right. here's another tool that you can do is you can turn on the names of the constellations so you can get to know them that way. So yes, Cassiopeia, and there's the lines of it. Cassiopeia is also known as the queen. So you're again, like, I'm not seeing that. There's no queen there. So she's sitting in a chair right now. She's upside down, just like everybody else falling out of her chair. Um, and of course, since none of these are real, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it the E, the W, the lightning bolt, um, right? You can even make up your own stories. You don't need to, it's the, the, Greek stories are not the only things that are out there. Remember, there are several other cultures that have their own stories about all of these. I made up my own story about this whole area of the sky, and I will tell it next Saturday when you come out in person to find these. Tonight, we're just going to find them. All right, so we've got, let's just go back through. Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Cassiopeia. Now, in between the Little Dipper and Cassiopeia, there's another Sorry, I'm lying. In between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, there's another great big long constellation. And just bear with me here. Follow my cursor. And it's going to be hard because they're kind of dim. But if we go kind of connect the dots, we're going to come around and around and around. And then we're going to kind of come here, make a little bit of a jog here to kind of this little funky shape right there. That long sinewy constellation is known as Draco the dragon. Turn on the lines and you can see. So dot to dot, lines, 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 the head of the dragon. And we'll give the art to give you another idea. So Draco, the dragon, is in between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And it starts and moves kind of in the direction of the, of the handle of the Little Dipper and then comes back around. And then there's one more constellation that's, um, again, kind of hard to see. We're going to look at this one right here. It looks like a little bit like a little tiny house. Um, this is Cepheus. Cepheus is the king. He's the, the queen and the king. Let me turn off that art and you can see why it's a little bit hard to see. But between the dragon and Cassiopeia, you can find this little triangle and then below it is a little square. So the triangle and the square are Cepheus the king. Not a very bright constellation, not a very exciting constellation, but still part of that circumpolar group. Um, so, so I wanted to just kind of show you real quick um, kind of how, um, like if you were to go out um, later tonight, so right now the, the clock is showing us that it's about 930 at night. If you were to go out, say, maybe at midnight, let's, let's just Fast forward the sky. And you can see how it rotates as the earth rotates. Um, but that's that North Star is pretty much right there as the Big Dipper just is moving around. So if you're to go out this and that or at 1.30 tomorrow morning, and you're kind of like, well, I remember it was like northeast, and now it's over here kind of northwest because it's rotated through the sky, right? Even the stars rise in the east and set in the west. Um, uh, and I'm going to continue on. And you can kind of see that um, we're going to go down here to Cassiopeia. See, it never really did set. We're going to watch the Big Dipper. It's going to get light. I'm going to turn off the atmosphere so that when it gets to be daytime, you don't see here comes the sun the sun's rising 
there's no atmosphere, so the blue sky doesn't doesn't happen. But here, here's the Big Dipper, right? It's getting really low on the horizon. Here comes some planets over here in the corner. Big Dipper is really low, but it's going to come back up. Cassiopeia is up here high in the sky now. And as the, as the, you know, the Earth continues to rotate through, the North Star is still there. Here comes Big Dipper. So you can kind of see how the, the sky moves at night. And if I turn the atmosphere back on, of course, we don't see any of it because now it's daytime. So we'll turn that atmosphere back off. We'll let the sun set and we'll come into, you can, have, you can see a lot of the satellites that are just blazing through the night sky. So what are we at? We're the next day. So we're going to turn the atmosphere back off. We're in the middle of the night tomorrow. So we're kind of in the same little spot, right? Um, here's the Big Dipper again. Did you see it? North Star, Cassiopeia. Look at that. Oh, did you see the shooting star? It came from the Lyrians. All right. So I want to um, move fast forward to next. Watch as it, each day goes on at the very same time. At 2300 hours, so it'll let that 11:30 um, each day as we move the position of those changes a little bit. So 11:30 next Saturday, this is what we'll see. Let's let's bop it down to um, eight eight, or we want to be nine o'clock, about 9:30. So to, so next week, if you're out with me and we're looking north around 9:30, this is the sky we'll see with the Big Dipper almost directly north um, of us, right across. And the Cassiopeia is going to be kind of really low on the horizon. We might not see her. But if we look to the west, this is where if you, um, if the sun sets and you get out early, you might be able to see part of Orion. But it's set now. If I turn off the um the horizon we kind of pull this up let's see there's Sirius mm -hmm. looks like I've lost where things are but all right we're gonna do this we're gonna turn this back on um so we turned off the the atmosphere and the horizon and we can see there's the three stars i'm going to zoom in a little bit there's the three stars of orion orion's belt orion's sword you can see if i turn the earth back on it's so it's set below so it's down there you can't see it which is why it is a winter constellation it's out in the winter I'm going to turn the atmosphere also back on. All right. So, but if we do, if we get out there, you can see Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. Sirius is part of the constellation um, Canis Major, big dog. Right now, most of it's below the horizon in the west, but we can hopefully still see part of that, that really bright star. We're not going to see any planets. Um, the planets are kind of, um, they're setting before the sun sets. So they're they're in front of the sun. And so they, they're they out uh, during the day. Of course, we can't see them because it's too bright. And then the sun sets and they are down below the horizon. So we won't see the, any planets, um, but we will see some really cool, really cool night, night sky stars and maybe a couple of um, satellites and maybe a few shooting stars. Um, and then if we go to the south, let's see if there's anything worth talking about um, in the south. There's, it's kind of a in-between time right now. Um, we're going to turn this on and see if there's anything that jumps out at anybody. Does anybody know what any of those are? This one's maybe kind of obvious-ish. 
let's turn on some some words there is anybody virgo is your is your uh, your constellation virgo and there she is right now and here's a way that you can find virgo keep an eye on this star right here the star is called spica i'm going to come back around kind of east northeast i'm going to find the big dipper here's how you can find a couple of other stars and constellations so go back to the big dipper remember these are the pointer stars that point to the north star the polaris but if you follow the handle of the big dipper and you arc to arc taurus so you you follow the arc of the handle to arc taurus it's part of a constellation but we're not going to go into that we're just going to find the star so you arc to arc taurus and then you spike down to spica and spica is in the constellation virgo so if you are virgo and you want to find your constellation that's how you will do it and then we go to the big dipper we'll arc to our tourist and then spike down to spica and it's a, it's gonna you'll you'll be able to see it it's a relatively bright star in the sky um, right now in the southeast part of the sky if you wait too long though it will set so don't wait too long to go see actually it's rising what am i it's east things rise in the east i'm good i'm awake all right um let's see that's really it just because i really do like winter constellations this is a great little cluster but we, i won't muddle it too much by looking at that um so but i really do like the circumpolar constellations because it doesn't matter the time of year if you want to go outside and find a friend in the night sky you can look north and find something that you could recognize. And hopefully you'll be able to get to know a few more than just the Big Dipper, right? We wanna be able to find the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Cassiopeia, and Draco the Dragon. I'm gonna turn those lines on one more time so that you can kind of see those before we wrap it up. We're gonna got, we've got the Big Dipper, the Pointer Stars, the Little Dipper, and you've got further on down to Cassiopeia. In between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, you've got Draco the Dragon. And if you really want to test it, you can try to find Cepheus the King as well. All right. And if you do come next Saturday, I promise we'll find other things as well, but I don't want to muddle us up too much. So circumpolar constellations tonight, other things, like this kind of stuff this kind of stuff next week and it's going to be beautiful weather i'm sure but we're just going to put that out there to the universe right now all right that yeah, is i'm glad that you talk sorry wendy i'm glad that yeah. you talked a little bit about next saturday um mike nixon uh again new new moon crew um yes. he asked what are you guys doing at the island next saturday which is a really good segue uh, for you to promote um, next Saturday's program. So. Perfect. So let me talk a little bit about that. So that one's a little bit later. We're going to start at 9 p.m. Uh, because we want to wait till the sun sets. And we're going to meet at the visitor center. So this one is not um, like it's not a star party. We won't have any telescopes. We won't have any anything big like that. So if you're if you're wanting But if you want to kind of just get familiar with the night sky with your unaided eye, um, so in other words, no binoculars, binoculars are probably okay, but no telescopes, we'll meet in astronomy stuff. Again, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a professional astronomer at, at all. I'm a very amateur astronomer. I just love the night sky. Um, so we'll spend a little bit of time inside talking about that. Then we'll go outside and we will find some of these things that we talked about tonight, um, in addition to some other constellations, and hopefully get get so that you can maybe pick out a few more things than you did before. Get familiar with the night sky, um, so that when you are out with your buddies in a hot tub at night looking up at the night sky, you can like impress them with your knowledge and your your um, night sky prowess and you can just make all of your buddies pretty excited to be looking up at the sky 
Um, but this time, even though it is hot tub astronomy, make sure you wear clothes and there will not be hot tubs. All right, any other questions about that? Or I guess at this point we can do, I'm gonna stop presenting. We can do general questions for a minute, if you would like, uh, part questions. Um, otherwise, we will, um, if nothing, if nobody has any questions right now, always remember that you can reach out to us on Facebook. You can reach out to us um, through um, Instagram. You can give us a call um, on the phone. You can send Trish an email and she'll answer your questions. But um, any questions about um, the night sky or what's happening the rest of the week, um, the park in general, shoot them my way. We'll, we'll answer some of those. I'm not getting any questions on the Facebook comments, Wendy. I think you did a great right. job. Okay, well, no worries. Um, again, um, thanks for coming tonight. Hopefully it got you excited about maybe going out maybe tonight, seeing what you can see. Um, let me just touch on that just briefly as well. If you do want to come out to Antelope Island to view the night sky because you can't see anything where you live, our gates are open until 10 p.m. If you come out before those gates close, you are welcome to stay later and enjoy the night sky. Um, if you want to stay all night, please get a campsite. There's only camping within designated campgrounds. But if you want to just stay a few hours after dark, after the gates close, you're more than welcome to do that. And then as you leave, there is an automatic opener at the gate. Um, when you pull up, it will open and you can let yourself out. All right. Okay. Well, thank you just answered Lisa's question too. She asked okay. us if uh, camping is available at the park. Yes, it is. Um, the best way to find that camping, Lisa, is on our website, antelopeisland.utah.gov. You can um, go up to the top right corner. There's a reserve link, um, and you can look at photos of the campground, uh, photos of the campsites, uh, and make a reservation right there. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, hope you see you later this week. And also remember there is an astronomy or a, a night sky photography class as well next Friday. I don't know if there's any room for that anymore, Trish, but I think you have to register in advance for that. Um, you can do that by emailing tackley at utah.gov and she will get you signed up for that astronomy class taught by our very own Ryan Andresen, who is amazing night sky photographer. Okay, bye.